Tervis põhjuvaate ja jätkame oma väikese filmi tutvustusringiga. Meil on linastumas ja tegelikult maailm on esimene esilinastus ühele filmile nimega Marionetta. Ja kindlasti soovitan vaatama minna. Ise olen piilunud natukene sinna täis, pikalt ei vaadanud, kuna ootan pikkisilmi suurt ekraani selle jaoks. Aga Alvaro Gurieli juba päris mitmes film ja kindlasti vaadates tema varasemat tööd üks minu lemmikutest ja ma usun, et väga palju võiks kõnetada inimesi üle maailma. Räägib sotsiaalsetest probleemidest ja paljust muus sinna kõrvale. So, hello Alvaro! How are you? Great to have you here. I'm, I'm fine, very happy you. to be yeah. in Estonia. Yeah, <laughs> as we discussed, you have a, <laughs> this a far from my house, far yeah. from my house, and uh, have a jet lag from tri time yes. traveling. Yesterday and I was, you know, with my girlfriend speaking about. Yeah, we have 25 million people just in Mexico City, mm -hmm. so you can imagine for us, yeah. where's the people, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So. Uh, of course, there will be a lot of questions for you during these uh, next days about the film itself and everything. But uh, yeah. I would uh, open up a little bit uh, about yourself. Uh, who is Alvaro behind well, the uh, filmmaking and everything? I'm a Mexican filmmaker. I I'm come from a, a family of uh, filmmakers. My, my grandfather was a filmmaker, mm. Mexican one. He did like 100 movies. He made just, yeah, 100 fucking movies. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'm, I'm third, third generation. Even uh, he, uh, my father was musician, you know, so so I've been making movies for the last 25 years. Yeah. Oh, really? I started really young and uh, I was an assistant director for very famous directors around the world. Mm -hmm. And then I just uh, finally did my movies. So I, I, I direct a, lo a lot of TV shows, TV series. Mm -hmm. That's why I have a gap between my first movie and the second one of almost 10 years, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I work with all these platforms, Netflix and Fox and Amazon. Mm -hmm. And so right now I'm presenting this movie. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. But I think it uh, kind of keeps you fresh with uh, all these different uh, things that, that you have on your hands between yeah. the films. So, I yeah. think it's very good, you know, because you have... So for the most important thing when you make TV series is that you have contact with very different kind of actors. You know, you have actors from theater, from cinema, from television, mm -hmm. from soap operas. From So you really have to develop a skill as a director to really tone, the tone mm -hmm. in the same level of thing, you know. So it's very good to really always be in the set, you know. For mm -hmm. me, every, I spend almost... Six, six, seven months of, my, of the year shooting TV series, so it's, it's good for... But then you have to come back to the cinema and understand that you don't have to hurry so much. You need to spend more time, you know, mm -hmm. directing. No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a totally different work comparing Absolutely. these two. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the big screen, the big screen. Mm -hmm. there's a difference between the, the yeah. size, no? Mm -hmm. Even. And uh, I, I agree, I think it's very important to have these different uh, opportunities to try out different actors. Exactly. Uh, I would say in Estonia there's uh, um, a bit of a challenge for film directors because most of the, most of the actors are with uh, theatre background. Ah, Probably okay, you okay. encounter that also. Yeah, it's yeah, a different uh, manner more, more of from acting. More TV in Mexico, you, you know, we have this very strong tradition of the of the soap operas and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. So really you have to work very hard with them because they, they used to have these like 80 episodes, so they yeah. don't do anything. They just are faces and something like that. So yeah. you really have to, to find this deep, yeah. you know, kind Long of... Long tension uh, gaps with, uh -huh. uh, with tension in a movie. It changed a lot, exactly. <laughs> it yeah, changed yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all right. Uh, I would ask uh, the, the story for, for example, my Marionetta. How do you find your stories? Uh, you know, it's, uh, in this case, you know, a, a Cuban uh, writer was a, a one of the best Cuban writers they have. He asked me, you know, he, I have this story, and I say, okay, I didn't want to make this story because I, my first movie was shot in Cuba. Mm. It was um, uh, my my first film was shot in Cuba, so for me it was like again a Cuban story. So I, I didn't. But then I read. I read the story and it was so fucking amazing, you know, mm -hmm. so, so we write it together. I, I love to write. For me, I, I think the, the most strong skill that I have is a gra as a writer, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then so we just uh, write it together. Mm -hmm. He was in Cuba, I was in Mexico, so it was, every time I send an email, I resp the response was like three months later. It was, the communication <laughs> was terrible, but even so, you know, I, we, we really enjoyed it because he knows very well Mexico and I know very well Cuba. Mm -hmm. So we make this mixture of uh, different, you know, views. And uh, so I just, I mean, I have a lot of stories to, I, in, my, in my house I have like the next seven movies, so I will love to have the money to do it very soon, no? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the, the story itself with Marionetta, it's a very strong story, yeah. uh, I would say. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a very good combination between uh, you and the Cuban uh, screenwriter. Yes. I think uh -huh. it's, there's a lot of, uh, 
probably Cubans and uh, all uh, different people from different countries yeah. uh, ending up in Mexico City following their dreams. And yeah, everything. exactly. Yeah. It's a Cuban following a dream in Mexico, so it's just mm -hmm. enough weird to hear, yeah. you know. And uh, no, it's, a, it's an homage for a lot of things that I love. This movie is about actors, it's about fiction. I love fiction because it organized my life in a way. I mean, the people don't think about the fiction in that way. The fiction organized my life, you know, in a way. Some people has the, the same thing in the poetry, you know. And for me, fiction is, is the way to really can change the life of the people, you know, in, as making art, you know, from fiction, you know. So I really love the fiction. And this movie is about these people that develop the skill to, to really tell the best lies. You know, so uh, the beggars in the, in the streets, you know, they, they, they just ask and they tell these terrible stories that are lies, you know. So yeah. in a way, I do the same every day, mm -hmm. but not in the street. So it's a, more, a little bit like this uh, American saying, uh, fake it till you make it. Uh, uh -huh. Exactly, uh -huh. that's a good, 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 good saying. <laughs> but uh, uh, you, you're saying that it's, uh, it's fiction, but it's very strongly... Uh, it's like, real. Uh, yeah, yeah the, it's absolutely real. It's, it's very connected with real life. Yeah, absolutely. You mm -hmm. know, it's, uh, in Mexico, you can imagine if you have 25 million people in the, in the same city, when you want just to be in a corner and ask for money, you have to be with the mafia, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you need to spend, you to pay for that right to be in that corner, you know, so it's really yeah. terrible, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really uh, real. As you said yourself, uh, I, I believe uh, that uh, Mexico and Mexico City especially is a city of lost dreams. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, lost dreams, because in a way you can imagine that Mexico, the first thing is that the color of your skin is going to tell you how much, how far you're going to be in life. It's mm -hmm. terrible. It's really terrible. I mean, I'm, as you can see, I'm not the typical Mexican. I'm very tall, and I'm, mm -hmm. and I can see that difference when I go and ask for money to make a movie. Mm -hmm. they, this is the different response from me from another kind of guy, you know. So, so, and then you have this is a very complex reality that you uh, find all these people that lost uh, lost opportunity because they, they cannot go to the school. They cannot. I mean, it's, it's the contrast because either way we have a very uh, strong economy, one of mm -hmm. the biggest in the world, you know. So, so uh, the other part, we have. For the last 10 years, the richest guy in the world was Mexican, Carlos Slim, you know? So I did a documentary about that. Oh, okay. So you have the richest guy in the world, he didn't invent anything. Mm -hmm. He just is a very rich guy because he has telecommunications and all that mm -hmm. stuff. He didn't invent anything as Facebook or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, Uber. And, uh, and then you have all this big amount of poor people, you know? So it's about that too, no? Mm -hmm. Is it important for you to tell these stories yeah, of these underdogs? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think in the other movie, you know, it was for, for me, it was me about Mexico. I, I think, in a way, you know, for me, the social, you know, conflicts are as very important. I mean, I, I love Ken Loach and all these British movies about mm -hmm. the, all this complexity about the social classes. You mm -hmm. know, so even if it's a comedy, even if it's a drama, whatever, I, it, you sh should always tell something about that. If you live in Mexico, mm -hmm. if you skip that part of the, the reality, it, it will be a disaster, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I, I believe that people think about uh, about Mexico as a as a very old country, that it, it yes, definitely is also, yeah, but, uh, yeah. but uh, uh, actually like uh, the republic or how to say the democratic yeah, yeah. Mexico is yeah. pretty new thing. And yeah, we, yeah, the democracy is really weird for us, you know, because for the last, the, in the 20th century, you know, in, if you see the history of Latin America, you know, they have all these coup d'etat, all, all these problems mm -hmm. in Argentina, Brazil, yeah. Paraguay, uh, Uruguay, and uh, in Mexico, they side a very weird thing because mm -hmm. the, the people does not speak about that in that terms. After the revolution, because it wa was the first revolution in the 20th century, even before the Russian one, mm -hmm. you know, we started in 1910, mm -hmm. was so deep and w was so terrible that that revolution in a way, in a good way, in a bad way, mm -hmm. that then, we decide to say to the to the state, don't worry, you're my dad. I, I will not bother you for mm -hmm. the next 90 years. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the same parties for nine. I mean, for 70 years from mm -hmm. 1930 to, to 2000, and suddenly you know everything falls apart. You know. Mm -hmm. So so now we are trying to understand and learning how to deal with democracy, mm -hmm. and it's really weird. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, glad to see that you're doing your part. In, yeah, of in course. A way. Yeah. You, you should be. I mean, we don't understand that it's not about just going to vote. We mm -hmm. need to be very participative, and, and the Mexican doesn't know how to do that. You know, mm -hmm. because for the last 70 years, we didn't say a word about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a, no, no, no. Your government, you're my dad. Don't mm -hmm. worry. You know, just feed me. Yeah. And, and, and suddenly the government couldn't make mm -hmm. it anymore. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it's. Uh, I think it's really, uh, really important to. Uh, show the real stories of uh -huh. Mexico. As you said, the soap operas and everything, it, uh, yeah. it's a very thick layer of, that of you course. can cover the whole the I, problems I, with. I'm even ashamed, yeah. you know, that I, I, I was talking about yesterday with this Romanian, a beautiful actress mm. of the Gypsy King 
movie. Gypsy Queen. Gypsy yeah. Queen. Yeah. And she was like, no, I, I, I learned Spanish from telenovelas, from soap operas. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I mean, we export that, you know. We, we, we have a Nobel Prize writer, Octavio Paz, and no, we sell te- soap operas, you know, so it was kind of terrible, you know. Mm-hmm. But again, we, you, we have to connect with that. As you said, you know, th- this ancient culture, the Mexican one, the problem is that not because you're Mexican, you know your culture. Mm-hmm. You're just Mexican. You, you really have to know your culture because yeah. it's re- really ancient. You know? I think people nowadays put uh, quite a small effort into it uh, to Nothing. learn about yeah, the roots and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's rushing and it's really the amazing, you know. We, we, we have, I mean, for 3,000 years, 3, years ago, we have the Olmecas, you know, mm-hmm. and then we have the Mayas. And then, I mean, mm-hmm. it's a very old and ancient, uh, you know, culture. But One the problem is that now we world, don't huh? know it. No? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's a very, uh, uh, very good place to start uh, as a filmmaker. Yes. It's, uh, there's a bunch of stories uh, of course, to, uh, to of choose from. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the complexity that you can understand that I, I, as a Mexican, I'm this mixture of Spaniard, Mexican. I mean, I have to deal with that. I, I, mm-hmm. It's a different story, you know. I, I'm not Maya anymore, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, in a way, I don't know how many layers I have uh, yeah. in my blog. But it's okay. This is the mm. new reality. Yeah, you know, even quite, a diffi- quite a difficult job to uh, follow back your roots yes, through yes, such yes. a difficult this, history. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you have to. Yes. No. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, a little bit about uh, filmmaking itself. Um, what be, what made you become a director? Uh, of course, the, uh, I Maybe. I understood already all the Maybe. great stories, what to tell and everything. But uh, yeah. there's uh, I don't know. Do you know, I, I don't know why, I mean, I, I, in some point, it's very funny because in the 20th century, when you are a failure in so many things, I mean, I, I, I'm a, play, a piano player, I'm a painter, but I'm a failure, you know? So at some point, you can have the talent of different people, and that's why I make, make movies, because there's, that's my talent, to direct different kind of talents from different people, you know? So, so in a way, if I were in the 15th century, I would be a disaster, you know? But right now, in the 20th century, I can have this, 21st century, I have this, uh, you know, the, the good thing is that I can really use the talent of different people to, to, I mean, the best architects, the best actors, the best writers, and then just pull all of that together. And, and they, so that's why I feel so comfortable about the, this uh, uh, as a tool, you know, the, 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 the art cinema, you know, because I really love to write. I really love music. I, I, I play a lot of piano every day of my life. And in a way, I can really, all that stuff can, can go together in the same uh, way, which is a movie, you know. So I, that's why I love uh, filmmaking. And uh, I really, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but in a way, imagine in 200 years, if someone watched my film, that's why I want to have that input of the, this is the reality of this moment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I'm, uh, I'm telling something that you should hear in 200 years, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's important for me to talk about the social things. No? Yeah. And uh, you're going to be, be like this uh, small waypoint on the route. Yes, uh, uh, this uh, chain, yeah. you know, just yeah. uh, one, one small part of the mm-hmm. chain. No? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great to hear. So, yeah. uh, the, just kidding a little bit, but uh, as you said, uh, your grandfather was a filmmaker, yeah. but your father was a musician. Uh-huh. So, uh, could I tell that you disappointed your father, but uh, <laughs> maybe your grandfather no, very happy? No, no, no. <laughs> it's weird, you know. Right now, my son is 16 years old, and suddenly he was, and am- he's an amazing musician. So, mm-hmm. so we are jumping just one generation, uh-huh. and suddenly he just said for the first time in two months ago, maybe I want to be a filmmaker. And for me, it was like, no, <laughs> please, no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was. I mean, I, I will support him, but I, I, I would love that he will be again a yeah, musician yeah. or something like that, you know. But, but yeah, my grandfather was very, he was a musician, he was a mm. painter, a, an amazing painter. He was a, a, mm. a director. I didn't mm. like his movies at all, you know, so <laughs> I'm trying to make a better one. So. <laughs> nice. no? But uh, the mu- musical background, does yeah. it help with the films also, uh, about, like creating the soundtracks? Uh, yeah, the now for me, the, the music is mm-hmm. the most important heritage that I have to, mm-hmm. to share. In my mu- my movie, the last one, yeah, this Marianetta, one yeah. the, the music is so fucking important. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I spent five months of my life every day with the, the composer. He was mm-hmm. in, in, the, in L.A. Mm-hmm. He's a Mexican composer, and we were every day talking from the piano. You know, mm-hmm. because for my, my relation with the musicians are from the piano. We mm-hmm. I speak from the piano, and then they they it makes it easier. It yeah, 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 for me, mm-hmm. in order to explain. Yeah, and uh, I mean, my father just died uh, four four years ago, mm-hmm. and for me, it was like, what am I gonna do now? You know, where is the music? And mm-hmm. now the music has to be there. You know, mm-hmm. I, 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 there's no way I, I will uh, miss that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
good, to, uh, great to hear that uh, it's uh, it's uh, so nice this uh, uh, generation jumping that uh, yes, from yes, film yes. to music it's like everybody's keeping everybody happy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I, if, I, if I will say to my father I'm going to be a lawyer, he will be like, why? Why? Yeah. And uh, suddenly I just said I, I want to be a filmmaker. And he said, okay. He said, mm -hmm. no? That's mm -hmm. very very normal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, things to say. Mm -hmm. The, as you said, that uh, with your tallness and a little bit lighter skin, it's a little bit an advantage for you in the movie yeah. movie business there. But uh, uh, how difficult was it for you? Uh, no, you know, in, the problem was that the Mexican industry. I mean, when I started making movies in the 90s, there was not movies in Mexico at all. Mm -hmm. It was like 10 movies every year. So then we had we changed everything. We have these funds with new laws, and mm -hmm. and now we are making almost 150 movies every year, which is a lot. And then. Mm -hmm. The television, you know, changed everything, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I started making TV series 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So everything changed. I never imagined when I started that I would have all this mm -hmm. kind of, uh, no, 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 not speak about success, but I, I work a lot, you know, so mm -hmm. very often and I have a very good life and very mm -hmm. comfortable life. And even I can make movies for free mm -hmm. because it's so important for me to make a movie mm -hmm. that I don't care about the salary, you know, I mm -hmm. really, and that's where I go to the TV and I say, okay, guys, you have to pay me because I, yeah. I need to make my movie. You know, so, <laughs> so that wasn't possible mm -hmm. 20 years ago. You mm -hmm. know, it was really difficult, but I was so young that I didn't care. You know, at yeah. that point. No. I think the, there was, a, uh, I can't remember the name, unfortunately, but the, there was a saying that uh, just shoot, just go and yeah. shoot something exactly. and call yourself a director yeah. and start from there. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to go in, 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 a, in a different way. In, I mean, I really want to make very independent and small movies right now I, to learn again how to do them, you know, because mm -hmm. in the TV series I do this, these big, big shows very mm -hmm. with a lot of money. So, so now again, this marionette in a way mm -hmm. is the, the way to go back to my roots mm -hmm. and to make something very independent, you know, so mm -hmm. I, because I really love it. To not don't have a studio saying, okay, this is going to be the mm -hmm. actor, this is going to be the script, you know, so, mm -hmm. so this movie was like that, you know, I mm -hmm. produced it. Mm -hmm. I produced the movie, oh, really? so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was that okay? I'm gonna produce this. I'm gonna raise the money. I'm gonna shoot mm -hmm. it, and I'm very John Cassavetes way. Oh, right. Okay, and he's the, my hero. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's quite a challenge, uh, actually. Uh, and I think it's a good thing, uh, even for uh, for art uh, altogether, to have the lack of uh, of money at some yeah, point. Yeah. You know. No, it's you have to learn. It keeps you creative. The, I the think. sad thing yeah. is, I mean, if you are a painter, you have to paint. If you are a musician. If you're a filmmaker, you're a business, businessman, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's if you don't know how to get money, mm -hmm. Iñárritu now knows how to get money, you mm -hmm. know, he produced Berman, mm -hmm. and I mean, Iñe Juarón, he produced Roma, mm -hmm. because he, th there's no way that you just have someone saying, no, don't worry, mm -hmm. you, you, can do the, you can do Roma with black and white, with Yalitza, mm -hmm. it will be impossible. So mm -hmm. you, that's why you have to learn where's the money and, and spend it in a very mm -hmm. reasonable and, and very like uh, respectful way, you know. Mm -hmm quite a challenging uh, step yeah. for yourself self also the, the from director the, the becoming also a producer yes, it's a, yes. it's a, it's a thing that usually directors try to keep away from <laughs> as yeah, much no. as possible no i'm very conscious you know absolutely mm -hmm. about the money because every i mean i try to put all the money in front of the of the screen you know not mm -hmm. below and uh, and be in in the that you're making people you're you're making people have salaries families and I mean, it's a very a lot of stuff is happening, you know. And mm -hmm. so, so if you live in a country like Mexico, you have to be very responsible how to spend money mm -hmm. because a movie costs a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know. So in a way, you will feed a lot of families with your movie mm -hmm. if you don't do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Or you can change someone's mind with your movie, you know. So, so you have to really decide, no? Mm -hmm. And on the side, you can uh, feed the families of filmmakers. Also. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah, in a very responsible way. Mm -hmm. I really but like that. But uh, it's super nice to talk to you, of course, but uh, mm. just to close it up uh, very quickly, yeah. um, just to give a short uh, insight to the film. Uh, like, Are you so, right? Yes, some keywords. The, the keywords is, uh, is uh, someone is trying, I mean, in, in, the, in, in the US you have the American dream, mm -hmm. which is possible, but not probable, you know. In Mexico you don't have any dream, you know. So the problem is that this movie, someone really, can make this happen, you know, and it has to be a foreigner, you know, so mm -hmm. you have this, uh, like, Luis Buñuel uh, mm -hmm. side of the, of the story, you know, so it's, a, it's someone to really, it's an artist that doesn't know that he's an artist, it's, he will know, you know, she will know because he's a woman, and I mean, it's a very loving story, it's a love story mm -hmm. in the subway, in the underground uh, in Mexico, okay, mm -hmm. something like that. <laughs> Great, Alvaro. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to have, have very you Very happy here. to be in Estonia. Yes, enjoy the rest of the, your days here. <laughs> Thank you very Go much. Go check out the films, of course. Thank you very much. All right.
et siit siis väike usutlus meie reisissööri Alvooraga ja mingi kindlasti vaadake marionetat, kõnetab kindlasti väga palju siit ja räägib ühest meile väga tundmatust sootsiaalsest pinnast tegelikult, mis on kaugel üle Atlandi mehikus, nii et mingi tutvuge võõraste kultuuridega ja vaadake, mida Alvaaral meile pakkud on.